Hi, I'm Sophie and welcome to my world. Today we have a really fun project, but it's actually a more complicated project. It's a duffel bag. It is a rounded end duffel bag. As you can see here, I call it a barrel bag. And we're gonna be making the mini version. I will have uh, instructions on how to make the larger version on my website, www.sophie-world.com. But today we are gonna start making this little barrel bag. Today what we're gonna be doing is just the ends and the straps. And then we'll come back in part two and do the body. And in the third part, we'll put them all together. So let me tell you what you're gonna need for the ends. For this project, you will need duct tape, a ruler, pen, foam core, scissors, X-Acto knife, a work surface, and parchment paper. Unlike a regular bag, the barrel bag needs something to help it hold its form, and so I'm going to be using a foam core here. Now, you can use cardboard if you don't have foam core, but this is a Dollar Tree purchase, which I love the Dollar Tree, and uh, it's nice and inexpensive, and it cuts easily. So I'm gonna be using a roll of duct tape for my template here, and all I'm gonna do is just make a circle around the outside, and I'm gonna need two of these. So I'm going to take a second one. There we go, just like that. And then I'm just going to cut these out with my X-Acto knife. I really like these retractable X-Acto knives. I guess they're technically called box cutters. And you can usually find these in hardware stores. Now, I like using a smaller piece of foam core and just kind of following it around and sort of moving the foam core as opposed to really moving the knife around. The main thing you want to do is you want to be very careful about slippage. You just don't want to go because you can end up cutting yourself. Okay, I would cut out both of these. Now the next thing we're going to do is cover this with duct tape. Now I've got some strips here. These are about uh, 10 inches long, these strips here. And what I'm going to do is actually cut them into thirds. So I'm going to cut it right down into thirds. And the reason I'm going to do that is that the way I like to cover my circles, especially anything with a rounded edge, um, which a circle of course has, is I like to do it in smaller strips. Now people, some people like to do it in these big strips, but what ends up happening is you end up getting all this scrunching around the outside, which, which I don't find very attractive. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these strips and I'm gonna go around my circle. First thing I'm gonna do is make an X. It's kind of like making a pizza pie. And I'm wrapping it front and back. And then I'm gonna come back and do an X through the X. So, that it, so it starts out looking like a railroad sign. And what it's gonna end up looking like is either a pizza pie or one of those asterisks now you can cut these pieces ahead of time so you're all set and ready to go. So there you see, you've got sort of an asterisk thing happening. Now what I'm gonna do is fill in these parts. And to do that, I'm gonna just use smaller pieces of tape. So taking those pieces that I've cut into thirds, but then I'm just cutting them shorter so that I can fill this in. And again, I'm still going front to back. It always helps to go front to back because then you're making sure you get a nice solid covering on the edges. Front to back. See, and you're just kind of filling in those little pizza wedges. Now when you're all done, it's gonna end up looking like this. So I would just continue covering, covering, covering all the way around using the smaller pieces to fill in these pizza pieces. And I end up with two discs like this. We're gonna jump forward a little tiny bit here. What I like to do for my end cap is once we've sealed this all together, I like to have a nice sealant piece that's just gonna hold all little pieces together. So what I'm gonna do for that is I'm actually gonna make myself a duct tape sticker. And for this one, I'm gonna use parchment paper. And I'm gonna be using 
my pattern tape to make my circle. I'm going to cover my parchment paper on both sides. So when I do that, what I'm going to do is just take my piece of parchment paper, lay it down, rub it really good, and I'm, I know I'm going to be using, this is my template I believe, yeah. So I know I'm going to be using this template here, so just making sure that I have enough. So I'm probably going to end up needing a couple pieces here. So, pull this out, use my knife here to cut that. Now you can do this in separate pieces if you feel more comfortable doing it that way. But I'm just going to wrap this front to back, making sure I've got enough space there. Yep. Front to back. Lay a second piece. Now when I lay the second piece down, and this is most important, whenever we do our stickers, you overlap by at least a quarter of an inch. And flip it over. And just check and make sure, is that big enough? I'm going to be using the inside of this circle, so that's certainly big enough. And now this is when you're going to use your pen again. And I'm just going to trace on the inside there. Now the thing about using a Sharpie pen, you can actually use a uh, one of those dry erase markers because they just come right off. And I'm cutting, you can see I'm cutting slightly outside that circle because it's on the inside, which is about a half an inch to maybe three-eighths of an inch out from the outside. So I know that this is going to be this, the right size. So I cut my circle, and now I have a sticker on both sides. So I have a sticker for each of my end caps. See that? And I can save this for later. Now, to get rid of this, you can just rub it with your finger, and it should come off as long as you haven't let it sit too long. Or the other thing you can use is a baby wipe or a little bit of rubbing alcohol. That'll take it right on off. But again, those dry erase markers just go, they just come right on off. So I've got my end caps, I've got my sticker, and what I'm gonna actually make right now for you is a strap. And I make this strap a tiny bit different just because I like to have things and shake them up and not make them always the same. So, this one I'm going to make a thin strap for. So what I'm going to do is take my piece of duct tape here, it's about, oh, 18 inches long, and I'm going to fold it up a little bit more than a third, a little bit less than a half. And see how I have a little bit of sticky here? I'm just going to fold that down. And seal it up nice and good. Now I want this to be long enough to go up and over my shoulder, so I'm going to need a couple more. So take another piece. Again, about 18, 20 inches long. Now this time what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, I'm insetting about a thumb, so it's about an inch and a half I'm going to inset. But when I inset here, I'm actually setting it right at the edge, which is different than I've done straps in the past. And the reason is, because then I can just fold this right up on top of itself. It makes an easier template, I've found. Let me just fold this over. Now you can continue, if you wanted to make this a crossover bag, body bag, then you might want to make this a, a double or triple or quadruple, but that's, that's long enough for me right now. Now I do want to do one last little thing, which is I want to add one little piece, four inch piece of tape, three inch piece of tape, and I'm just going to find that seam there and I'm just going to seal it. Just wrap it around couple times. That's going to make sure that that's nice, solid strap for you. So you can pull that, and that's going to have a lot of strength to it. All right, that's it for this part. Get these parts ready, and when I come back, I'm going to show you how to make the body.